All right, let's say hello now to one of the big winners from this past weekend in Houston, Texas. What a fight. We all suspected it would be a fantastic fight. It ended up, of course, winning the fight of the night, Edson Barbosa, with that tremendous win against Shane Burgos. A lot to talk about there. Uh, Edson, thank you so much for the time. Congratulations on another great performance at 145 pounds. And Edson, I have to say, off the top, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to raise my hand. I'm going to raise mm -hmm. my hand and say, I'm sorry. Because I said going into this fight, mm -hmm. I'm worried about the weight cut for you. I'm worried about you at 145. Now, I think you should be going into the fight 2-0 at 145. I said, even though I thought he beat Dan Ige, and even though, of course, you beat Makwan Amir Khani, mm -hmm. I'm worried cutting too much weight. But now, no more. I'm a believer. Edson, 145, no problem. So I'll say I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, everybody was so scared about the, the cutting weight, but... I'm really skinny guy, you know. Uh, yeah, I, I, for sure, for true, that's true. I don't have a problem to cut weight. It's the same feeling I have to cut 155. It's the same feeling to cut 145. Wow. What, what do you walk around at? Like, you know, two weeks from now after the fight, what will you be? Two weeks out of fight, 170. Wow. And you go, and no problem going down to 145. You don't find no, the last day is tougher. My, but that's my weight when I fight 155. Same thing, okay. still the same. Okay, interesting. And you don't find like the Thursday, like the night before the weigh-ins or anything that it's tougher to get those last pounds off? Not really. Okay. Like the same feeling, exactly the same feeling. And that's I'm crazy. I'm assuming you don't feel like you've lost power or energy, speed, anything like that? No, definitely not. I feel, like I said, I feel more healthy right now because a couple of years ago, I need to push myself to keep my weight high. I try to stay between like a 180, 180, 175, but I kill myself, eat a lot of calories, kill myself. Right now, I don't need to do this anymore because I eat clean all the time. I eat, you know, I feel more healthy for me or my body. Is there a part of you, Edson, that wishes you did this earlier in your career? Yes, yes, exactly. You know, a couple of years ago when I fought kickboxing Brazil, uh, you know, I never did diet in my life. I always walk with like a 155 and fight 155. Sometimes I drop 145, but I do diet my whole life, you know? Mm -hmm. So why didn't you move down to 145 in the UFC earlier than you did last year? Like a couple of years ago, why didn't you do it? Because I was still fighting 155, but still in the top. Yeah. You know, I still fight with the big guys for sure way heavier than me but i still beat the guys you know right i still want the best 155 still why why when i you know suffer a little bit more i don't need it's too fine here 155 so your last two fights prior to this one they were in the the empty arenas right in the, mm -hmm, the midst of the mm -hmm. pandemic uh the first one of course in jacksonville and then the next one in abu dhabi this time sold out could you feel a difference? Did you did you sense a difference, like walking to the cage, even in the fight itself? Do you notice that there are people there as opposed to not? It's very, very, very different. I really need to prepare myself, prepare my mind to, to that time. Yeah, it's different, especially for my style, you know? Uh, I feel when I have a whole crowd there, he's keep pushing me to go. Because every time you hit some good shot, you, you, I hear a whole crowd like, oh, I was like I'm so excited. It's different. I'm very, very happy to fight with whole crowds back. It was very apparent early on in the fight, at least to me, that you were in great form. Uh, the leg kicks were, mm -hmm. were, were, were being fired very quickly. It actually reminded me a little bit of your UFC debut against Mike Lulo in, in Auburn Hills, Michigan, the way in which you were throwing those leg kicks and attacking and, and I'm wondering if you knew early on, like you knew going into this fight that his leg would be exposed like that. Was that something that you were preparing for or is it something you noticed in the moment? No, I, I, I watch a lot of his fights. He, he's a really good boxer. I know he's, he's worked very well with his hands, but he's a boxer, you know? He don't check the kick and I know his leg will be there. That's I train for, you know? I train for a couple of weeks for beat his leg and i think i'm doing well yeah uh, at one point though you were bleeding your shin was bleeding what happened there 
that's crazy. It's a big cut in my shin. And it's funny because I, I talk to my wife and my mom say, I don't feel nothing, nothing. But and I think in the second, between the second and the third round, I look my, I look at first thing, I look his leg, I see a lot of blood. It was like, what happened? Because huh. I, I didn't see it. And I look down and look my, my chin, it's a lot of blood. But I don't feel nothing. But it's automatic. I stop to kick. That's crazy. But I don't feel nothing. What about after the fight? Did it did it hit you? Yeah, I do a couple of states, but it's fine. Has you know you've you've thrown a lot of leg kicks in your day. Has that ever happened to you before? No, that's wow. the first time I cut my my shin with the kick. That's crazy. So even in the fight, as your shin is bleeding and there's a cut, you still didn't feel a thing. No, I still kicking. I stopped the kick when I stop when I see the, the blood. Wow. I see the blood, it was like okay, something happened, but I don't feel. I really don't feel. Wow. And uh how does it feel now? It's good. No problem. My my feet a little bit of uh, swelling, but that's fine. A couple of days off and I'm ready to kick again next week. Uh, the finish is one of the most unique finishes that I've ever seen. And you've given us a lot of unique finishes in your career, but to punch someone like that and then to see them have the delayed reaction, you know, we, we sometimes see a punch to the body, a kick to the body, yes. and then there's a delayed reaction, but to the head, we don't see that. What do you, you know, what, what, what is going through your mind when you see him start to lose control and fall backwards like that after the punch? It's crazy because I'm like it. most guys in the, over there. I didn't see it. I see. I ask myself, what happened? What happened? Because I, I really don't know. Because I connected good shots to him, really clean shots, and he's still there. Um, there one I connect a good shot, but he's still there. I start to see his leg shake a little bit. He's go down in front. I was like, a, okay, let's go finish the fight. Because I met with the judge, say don't stop to hit and let me stop. Say okay, but I, I connect two shots. I go straight. I talk to Donna first. I give my bundles and I go straight. Talk to my coach. I say what happened? Because I really don't remember what shot I connected him to make a hit go down like that. That's crazy. I, have you ever seen that before? Has that ever happened to you where someone has? Yes, that? no. That's not happened, never happened with me, but I see, but not that long. Yeah. So connect the shot, but in a couple seconds, two, three seconds, go down. I think it's six seconds yeah. to connect and go down. That's six seconds uh, delay, you know? Right. Did you talk to him after the fight? Yeah, I talked to him in the backstage. He's such a nice guy. Uh, very tough. Definitely one of the best. And it's a lot of respect for him. And I hope he's come back stronger. Was he okay back there? Yeah, the he's part? fine. He's fine. Okay. Yeah, he's fine. He's fine. Wow, that is unbelievable. Um, and so, you know, you get this amazing win and uh, it's three, it's two in a row. It should be three in a row, in my opinion. Three, 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 three. All right, three in a row. <laughs> you know, but you had that stretch there, you know, with, with the Felder fight, which I know you also think you won and, you know, Gaethje and even prior to that, Kevin Lee and Khabib. If I would have told you that things would turn around for you here in this new weight class a year and a half mm. or so ago, two years ago, would you have believed me? no no that's crazy because yeah if you ask me like a couple years ago say no nah, that's not gonna happen that's crazy but, are you starting to lose hope confidence no no uh i think because i i start feeling like okay i need some new challenge with myself that's it just new challenge of myself you know that's what I feel. That's how I was changed for 145. Because 155, I, I, I feel I just fighting for a fight, you know, mm -hmm. just fighting to make some money. Okay, of course, I want to be a champ. I want to be a number one. But when 155 division, because I fought, no, everybody, but the best guys in the world, I still fighting, you know, like, okay, let's fight. Okay, yeah, I'm motivated. But I don't feel like that for real you know like i excited to to be a champ 
And when I decide to drop 145, it's a start again, you know, I still like, a, that's the beginning again, you know, that's a feel different right now because I feel like, a, I know I can do be a champ. I know I can be a champ for sure. And like I said, that's, that's a new beginning for me. Who, who came up with the idea first to go down to 145? Uh, my, I talked to my wife about this. And she, ah, oh, you crazy, you're not dead. Uh, but she pushed me a little bit. Uh, my wife is brother, talk to me about that. And I have a really good friend of mine, Jim Stewart from the United States. One of my best friends right here in the United States. He talked to me like a long time ago. Why do you think about drop one feet five? So, bro, you're crazy. How do I want to drop one feet five? And I start think about, you know, and yeah, I did it. <laughs> wow. Um, and so, all right. So, so now you have this situation where you're on this role and uh, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, th- this was the first fight of your new contract, right? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Did, did you ever test like the, the Makwan fight? That was your last fight of the last contract? No. There was one left? Supposed to be one more. Yeah. Did you consider testing free agency or did you always want to stay with the UFC? Uh, at that time, I, I, I think about test, you know, yeah. to be a free agent. But thank God I, I sit down with my manager. My manager talked to UFC and inside a new deal, like a good deal for me. And for sure, it's a good deal for the companies too. I'm very, very happy with my new contract. Okay. Uh, you said last week it, it kind of uh, made some headlines that you said this is the first time in your career you feel like you're getting what you're, you're owed. Is that accurate? Exactly. Exactly. That, this, this is motivating me a lot. You know, I was like every day the gym saying, nah, right now the guy paid me what I really deserve. Yeah. <laughs> But the, the first thing that came to mind when I, when I read that, Edson, was you've been in the UFC for 11 years. What took so long? That's crazy. <laughs> it's funny because I was in the backstage. I talked to Shannon Burgos. He's come to me and said, bro, I remember I watched your fight. I was in high school. I was like, uh, oh, uh, I get older. That's funny. But at the same time, I'm feeling well because I say, I'm getting older. Am I still? beat these guys you know the young guys i feel better than ever that's crazy by the way before you said you know you were thinking that you know maybe you needed to do some sort of change some new challenge um when you were you know in that period at 155 did you think about leaving mma or when you say new challenge within the sport of mma no no leave it no leave okay and okay. the mma but like a new challenge to, to keep pushing me. I try to think about maybe go up to 170 or go down to 145 wow. or do something different, you know, right, to make right. me wake me up, you know, again. Uh, when you consider your, your own journey in this sport and your own career, and then you see what your fellow Brazilian Charles Oliveira did on Saturday and, and what he has been through, the ups and downs as well, and then the reception mm-hmm. he got back home in Sao Paulo, the, the parade, how do you react to that? Do you, does it make you feel like this is something I want to, this is something that I can have as well? hundred percent for sure. That's, I saw him, this motivates me a lot. He's such a nice guy. I'm very happy to have opportunity to fight in the same night with him. You see everything. This guy, it's crazy because me and him almost like a close go into the UFC. We're super close. And I saw him, I follow him, you know, my whole career, his whole career. And happy with him, I know can happen with me too. It's an amazing thing. That parade is, mm-hmm. is, is incredible to see all the people coming out and, and cheering him on. So for you, what makes sense next? Have you thought about that yet? When do you want to return and against who? I want to return August, like in August. Okay. You know? Yeah, I need to uh, just recover my feet. Only my feet get hurt, but thank God I'm still healthy. And yeah, I want to fight top five, man. I think I really deserve a top five. You know, I have, I beat Dan Iggy, he's a top 10. Right now, Burgos, he's top 10. And I really deserve the top five guy.
I'm trying and to look. especially because the top five guys you see, all those guys really good, very, very tough. And I know if I have opportunity to fight those guys, it's going to be a big show again. It's good for, for, for the promote, good for UFC. It's going to be a big war. Imagine if fight me against Qatar. It's going to be a great fight. Yeah. Me against Zumbi Korea. It's going to be crazy. Mm-hmm. Me against Holloway. Me that was against, the one I was uh, thinking of. Uh, uh, Pantera. I forget his name. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Imagine. Yeah. yeah. Bro, it's going to be a crazy fight. I know it's going to be a good fight. Do you have a preference, like the, the, the top choice for you? Any one of those, the top five is going to be perfect for me. Okay. Um, Especially because I really believe it deserves. Because I have opportunity to fight everybody 155. Mm-hmm. I fought everybody. I never picked somebody. I never asked to fight somebody. Bro, I really deserve. Bro, I have 10 years in UFC. Come on. Mm-hmm. I really deserve the top five. Uh, this time next year, Edson, where are you in the division? I don't remember. No, this time next year. Are you? Uh, next year? Yeah, next year. Oh, where uh, are you? Uh, uh, bro, I want to take the door to, to get my chance for the title shot for sure. I want to mm-hmm. be there. Mm-hmm. I hope to do like a true fight this year. Mm-hmm. Next year, get my chance to get the title shot. Or depends who's gonna who I want to fight this year, like a uh, next one, and get my chance for the title shot. I really believe that. And and no more one fifty five. You're sticking at one forty five. I'm a fighter, you know. <laughs> I, if a guy asks me to fight <laughs> some some good fight one fifty five, why not? Right. But my focus right now be a champ 145 in featherweight division i love it uh etzen uh, parabens congratulations on the win uh you're, you're looking great my man you're you're really looking great at 145 and that was a tremendous fight a tremendous performance and i'm sure you're happy with tony ferguson for getting 25 extra thousand right yeah for- yeah I, I, I think i need to give you 10 <laughs> for him <laughs> uh, well well deserved well earned uh looking forward to what's next for you and, and i hope your your leg heals up soon Thank you so much. Thank you one more time for the opportunity to talk to you guys. Anytime. Thank you, Edson. All the best. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.